Hello everybody. Pretty recently I came across a video in which Gordon Ramsay showed how to properly break down a lobster. He did it really quickly. And it became so interesting to me, like how you can cut up different products with lightning speed. For this we bought two lobsters, two salmon, and two chickens. The point is that by buying a whole carcass you save a lot of money. Because it is much cheaper than the ready-made fillets at the store. Let's start with the lobsters. We bought two of them in order to show everything slowly on one and already cut up the second one for speed. We have live lobsters. Therefore, so that they don't suffer, we put a knife to the head and punch the brain. That's what all cooks do, so it's okay. Now we remove the elastic band from the claw. Put a pot of water on the stove. And when it boils, we lower the lobsters so that they are completely submerged in the water and cook for literally two minutes. Then you can take them out. Let it cool down a bit and we begin to carve. First, we tear off the claws at the base. Then we sort of unscrew the tail. Through a towel, we squeeze the shell on the tail so that it cracks in some places. We remove the shell one strip at a time, starting with the thick side. And when most of the shell is removed, we take the edge of the tail and moving a little, we take out the meat. And then we got out the tail, so now the claws. We break off some phalanges, then a small part of the claw. We hit the remaining one with the blunt side of the knife to split the shell. And then we take out the meat. Then we do the exact same thing with the other claw. We divide the phalanges with scissors cut lengthwise and we get the meat out. And the last thing is the meat in these little legs. We tear them off. Cut out the edges with the scissors. And squeeze out the meat with a rolling pin. We send the last pieces of meat to the board. We pull out all the insides from the head. We cut off the head in a circle and then put it on the board. That's it, we get a perfectly butchered lobster. Now let's split the second one in the same way, but this time with a stopwatch. Let's go. And stop. Well, let's say it was 4.40. Taking into account that I was constantly correcting the phone during the editing, we got a small pile of meat and a lot of shell. We will probably make some of the most expensive sandwiches out of the lobster meat. To do this, let's cut the meat into small pieces. Done. We put the frying pan on the stove, add some oil in, and we drop the lobster into the frying pan. Now we salt it. Add in a little oregano and mix. Basically that's it. It's not necessary to fry the meat to a crust. We take some soft buns for a hot dog and fry them in a deep frying pan until you get these grill strips. From iceberg lettuce, we tear off a leaf and we put this in the bun. For a sauce, we have this mayonnaise with truffle added to it. Let's just wipe it on the lettuce leaf from the inside. Then our lobster meat on top. We also cut some green onions and sprinkle those on top. And also some lime and cut this in half and squeeze out the juice. The sandwich is ready, let's try it. This is freaking delicious. And most importantly, nothing really interferes with the taste of an expensive lobster. Speaking of prices, the cost of one such sandwich is $20. The next product for cutting, we have salmon. We took two fish of three kilograms each. We put them on paper towels. And to make it more convenient to work with, we soap up all the liquid. 
You guys all know my main knife, but it's not very suitable for cutting. Let's just take an ordinary chef's knife. It should be very sharp, so let's sharpen it up a little bit. First, we cut at the head. As soon as we rest along the ridge, we turn the knife. In cutting off the ribs, we move along the ridge towards the tail. We take off the first staff. Turn the fish over to the other side. And do the same thing. You can cut this theoretically so that all the ribs remain on the skeleton. Just gently swipe it with the blade of the knife and remove the meat. Now we clean the remaining ribs and the fat part. But that is not all. There are some small bones in there. So we pull them out with some tweezers in the direction of the fibers. The skeleton itself has some meat remaining, so using this, we'll be able to cook a really nice soup. And we're left with a clean fillet, and now we just need to cut it into portions. Done. Now let's do the exact same thing for speed. Let's start. In total, 440. That is, by buying a whole salmon is way cheaper than a finished fillet. And the work only takes four minutes and you can save a lot. So let's cook the fish up really simply and very tasty. But first for the side dish, we measure out a glass of rice and pour it into a saucepan. We wash it and pour in two cups of water and on the stove until ready. Just don't forget to add salt, also asparagus. We open it up from the rubber bands, and in order to separate the solid part off, we break it. We will use only the thinner stems. We pour some oil into a pan, and toss in the asparagus. Fry it for about a minute on both sides. And that's it, you can take them out. Using the same pan, we spread out the pieces of salmon skin up. And while they're frying up, we will make a special mixture. It's soy sauce lemon juice, also break off a piece of ginger, and clean it, then grate it. Throw that in the mixture as well, and also a teaspoon of honey, and mix it up. We turn the fish over, and pour our mixture into the frying pan. Cover with a lid, and let this sauce boil down. And when half of it has already evaporated, we turn the fish over for the last time. And we wait until the sauce settles on the pieces of our salmon. That's it, we put a culinary ring on a plate, and we put rice inside of it. Now we lift it up. We take a piece of salmon and put it off to the side. Also asparagus. Pour some teriyaki sauce on top. A little bit of balsamic. Sprinkle with green onions and sesame seeds. Now our dish is ready. The fish cooked in this way is very juicy. And the asparagus gives a really nice crunch. And the last thing we will do is the simplest, hatchcocking a chicken. Let's start with the wings. The main thing here is to get to the joint and separate the wing. There are wings and now the legs. We cut the skin at the bottom of the breast and get to the joint of the thigh and cut it off. So we have our legs. Now for the fillets. First, we take out the skin. They will be a bone in the center, so we make incisions on the sides. We 
we walk through with our fingers to separate the meat. Now let's bypass the so-called wishbone. It's a really thick bone. And carefully cut off the whole filet. Now there are bones that can be given to a dog for sure. That's it, the standard cutting is over. We have legs, wings, and the filet breasts. Let's see how much I can manage at speed. my resulting time is a minute and 58 seconds. That's what we got from two chickens. But we need smaller pieces for our recipe. So let's do everything now. First, we cut off the wrong third phalanx for the wings, and we divide the remaining two separately. We remove the skin from the legs, and separate the thigh from the leg. Now cut the thigh in half. Now for the breasts. We separate a small fillet from that. And cut the rest into small pieces. Now everything's ready. Now we take a plate, pour some flour into it, paprika, oregano, salt, and chili pepper. That's it, now we mix the spices together in flour. We throw the chopped filet into the pan, as well as the wings. Pour out half of the mixture, cover with the lid, and shake. So these are the pieces that would get covered with a thin layer of flour and spices. Now we pour it all out onto a baking sheet, and spread it out evenly. We send all this into the oven. We're gonna do the same thing with the legs. And shake it up again. But now we put them already onto a grid. And put the gridded rack into the oven. At 180 degrees, leave for about 50 minutes. Thanks to the flour, the chicken turns out really crispy. But that's not all. We need a head of garlic. We smash it with our hands. Peel each of the cloves. Crush them with a knife. And finally dice. We dump all this into a bowl, and then add a lot of ketchup. And a couple teaspoons of honey. Now we mix up our sauce, and pour the finished chicken into a bowl. Then we top the chicken with our sauce. Cover with a lid, and shake again. That's it, we're left with a really nice sweet and sour chicken. We dump all this out on a tray, level it out, and sprinkle with sesame seeds. And now we have a delicious snack for a whole group of friends to enjoy. In terms of price and taste, this is the best dish for today. I myself ate a third of the tray after filming, and barely stopped. Therefore, be sure to try this at home. If you would like us to time test our experiments again, then write in the comments what exactly. I think that we could try all sorts of like fruits and berries and watermelon. If you would like to see it, then just like this video. 350,000 likes and we'll keep doing it. Also, subscribe to the channel and to our Instagram. Bye everybody.